This car is untuned right now. But you can hear the turbo spoolie noises. So here's a size comparison between the two turbos. You can see how big the factory inlet is versus this. You're about to see the G2330i in a whole new light. This isn't about sticking with the factory turbo. Not today. Today's mission is transformation. We're taking this four-cylinder machine beyond the usual, dialing up the horsepower. Keep watching. By the time we're done, we'll be hitting 500 crank horsepower. This is the IM450. It's capable of 450 wheel horsepower on E50. It's made by a company called In Pursuit of Motorsport. So we have the turbo, we have the downpipe, we have the inlet, oil supply lines, turbo install kit, clamp for the downpipe, and a new exhaust manifold gasket. So one of the first recommended steps is to put the hood into the surface position. Next up, we're going to remove the engine cover. And after that, this rubber seal. You got to pop this wire out of it. We're going to want to remove this acoustic cover. It just snaps in with those rubber grommets. We're going to be going after this electrical connector here. You just pop this plastic out, then you can press on it. Flathead screwdriver for this clamp. This whole piece will just lift up and out. Now we're going to come up here, squeeze on both sides and pull this off. After this plug right here, slide this out. Then you can torque on it and pull it away. This can be left up here. Same style right here. Got that one. I remove that clip so we can slide off the resonator. If you look right here, there's another push style clip. We clip that. So this guy just clicks into that pipe and then this one clicks into it right here. It's just like an N20. Now's a good chance to go after the charge pipe. I just removed the clamp altogether. Following it up here, there's a couple more connectors. We have three T30s right here. This acoustic cover up at the front has to come out. You have push style clips right there. One in the corner here. I'm going to unclip this. This pushes into there. I just pop this out of here. Got two more push pins right here. Next up is going to be the O2 sensors. As you can see right here, you have to put your pick tool in here and kind of move this out of the way. Be able to slide this off the bracket. The black O2 sensor plug just unclips. And we can take this out of here and back here. Clips in in a couple places. Now bring over your O2 sensor tool. Now up in this area, you gotta detach these cables from the bracket. These are E6s, there's two of them. There's a T30 right here for this screw. This is an E10. Another one back here. Time to raise the car up now. I'm gonna remove the splash shield here. Continuing on to this cover here. These are all 10 mils. I'm putting a tray under the car. Going after this line here for the coolant feed to the turbo. Coming after this downpipe clamp, 16 mil on this. The downpipe clamp was a 13. We have a 13 bolt on the other side. To get some more slack in the exhaust, I'm going to take this 13 off. There was one T30 right here to pop this off. Some coolant dripped out. I didn't drain the entire block and disconnect the cooling hoses at the radiator to drain this right out. So it only really lost a little bit. It took about a minute to drain. I just opted to go that route. You know, you could probably get it from the top, but I just did it from the bottom because it'll be a better shot for you guys to see where I'm working. So that's a bit of a tough shot, but I popped out the turbo drain line to the block. Went after this T30 up here. That's our oil feed line. By the way, the drain line would have been easier access from the top. You can see it right here. You have the coolant feed line that clicked in here, leading to here. And then you have the return, which we took out from below side of the block. But like I said, you could reach down here and easily undo it. So I'll probably put it back on that way when I'm done. And then we had the oil feed line, which went right here to the turbo. So it appears I'm ready to take out the five bolts up at the top. These are 10 mils now. They used to be 11 on the older generation. Came off with the stud. Now this piece pops out. So here's a size comparison between the two turbos. You can see how big the factory inlet is versus this. And you can see how much wider this section is here versus here. It's a lot smaller. This is thicker. 
on the turbine side you can see it's also a lot beefier so quite a difference now i'm going to start moving over components starting with the wastegate and then eventually all the coolant and oil feed lines okay so the new turbo comes with an actuation arm and a new clip we're going to have to take the electronic wastegate section off i did take a picture of the adjustment from factory we will need to calibrate after the fact with ista but i'll try to match as many threads as it was just to have a good baseline There's a clip removed. I'm only taking this off so I can take the spring over. Now we'll get the new arm so that goes like that. These are T25s. That looks to get this off. You have to take this nut all the way out. Slide it out. And then you can just slide this piece toward you. There's a little notch here to guide you. So line it up with that. Good to go there. Bring the wastegate. So I adjusted that to a similar amount, right about there. Now make sure you have the arm underneath the spring portion so it moves back and forth. Bring it over, slide it on, straighten it up, install the lock nut, bring over the clip. Placing the clip here, using a 10 mil socket so it doesn't go flying to get it started. There's the wastegate installed. Got a T30 here for the coolant lines. Another one here for a clamp. So give it a little wiggle back and forth. Okay, so for the coolant feed line from the engine, I had to tweak this a little bit to be able to get this section to clear the larger inlet. What I did is I basically put this on my shelf and I torqued it so this is more straight. So I'll be able to line up the one hole using some coolant for lubrication on the O-ring, getting that situated in place. I'll be able to tweak this slightly to get this to line up. Now you're gonna use one of the supplied lines for the turbo return to the block. Keep a note that these are tight. This isn't to allow you to fine tune coolant on the O-ring for oil lubrication. Bring in over the oil drain line. All right, next up we have the banjo fitting for the oil supply line. The drain already had a whole bunch of oil on it. It's already been pre-lubricated. It's not gonna be completely dry, especially since it's dual ceramic ball bearing, you don't have to worry as much, but I'm going to put turbo additive just for peace of mind. Now it won't be a dry start. Okay, we'll bring over our oil feed line. Now make sure you have one copper washer above and one washer below. Okay, keep that at a 90 degree angle. Decently snug on that, just enough to compress the crush washers. FYI, that was 16 mil. So we can take this back toward the car. So this piece is gonna be replaced by this because of the opening difference. So I need to be able to get this off. Let's get a bit of slack in that. Okay, we're good to go there. I'll play with the final positioning after and then I'll cinch this down. Okay, so I did a dry run where I basically tried to hang the turbo and I made a couple observations that should make the install a little bit easier. Firstly, we're gonna take the ends off the lines and screw them into the points where they join the block. So up here at the front, and then we have one by the coolant area. I noticed as I was trying to wedge the turbo into place, this was making contact right here, causing it to resist and give me a hard time. So I'd recommend you leave this off. I did a trial run to make sure I could slide that behind. Now over here, this clicks in right here. I removed it and lifted it up so that I won't have it fighting me as I'm trying to lift the turbo into place. So I'd only mount this line on the bottom. This is the factory line that we tweaked to make fit. And this is your coolant return line. So I would mount that right here and then make it straight and tight. Now while I have ample room, I'm going to install the fitting on the coolant return. I've hung the gasket. If you notice, there's a peg here. And there's a peg on the other side that's going to hold the new gasket in place. If you notice, it has a different shape in the corner there. It's designed to clear the head because of the timing components. And up here, it's just flat. Bringing over the new turbo. It just hangs into place. Got this out of the way. Now I'm not fighting against this. Down here, I'll just take care of the turbo drain line from the top. Slots right in. Now I'm going to bring the turbo feed line up from the bottom. It may have seemed like a bit more of a struggle, but that was just a lot easier than trying to clear that lower cast iron bracket while having that already on the turbo. Right now it's below that plane. I put a tiny bit of grease on this copper washer to hold it in place. Now we'll come down with the banjo bolt and the copper nut. And just as an FYI, I kind of fatigued the original lines just trying to get everything in place doing a trial run. So that's why I have different looking lines, but they're the same type. You bring your turbo feed line around the front like that line going to the block i'm going to get it from below will be a little easier bringing over the upper bracket starting the copper nuts we're going to start in the middle here and do a joining torque of 10 newton meters next one in the sequence is right here number two that was number three number four is up here we'll go to number five at the end now we're going to do the tightening sequence it's going to be the middle one and then it's going to be two three four five and this is 16 newton meters now that the turbo's torqued, I'm going to torque down this banjo bolt for the oil feed. 
Hopefully this goes without saying, but when you're mounting everything in place, never hold it by the wastegate. Always hold it by the body of the turbo. We can connect this coolant line now. This can come back. This will go in here. And go ahead and start inserting brackets. Putting in the new downpipe gasket. Slide that in from below. Reached up in there, tightened up that line for the coolant. We go ahead and bring over the downpipe. I'm gonna start putting on the sound ending. So that's the inlet that comes with the turbo. I'm gonna be installing that now. I already got the inlet installed. I snapped this line on here. Bring over this line. Wastegate line on, bring it over the air box. Let's give it a first start. So I actually forgot to adjust the wastegate by ISTA, but I put it in the same spot that it was, and maybe it didn't even give me an error. Okay, I take that back. I got a drivetrain malfunction, so let's go ahead and adjust the wastegate. After that test is saying I gotta adjust the wastegate, so I'll do that now. So overall, I made the length shorter. Let's see what that does. All right, that adjustment took. We're gonna give it another start after clearing the fault memory. So as you can see, it's a lot quieter. I actually didn't cinch down the downpipe clamp, the 13 mil V-band downpipe clamp. So that was making it slightly loud. It's pretty quiet as is right now though. We'll let it warm up a bit, then I'll give it some gas. Everything looks good. I'm gonna go around to the back and give you guys an exhaust clip. It sounds pretty deep and throaty, so you know the car's not tuned yet, so I'm not gonna be able to rev it up, but it sounds nice. By the way, this car is untuned. In comfort mode driving normally, you wouldn't know it's not stock. I hate to leave you on a cliffhanger, but that's going to conclude this video. This was an install video for the IM450 turbo upgrade on a B48. This will be similar to an F30, and you can install the same turbo on an F30, FYI. I'm going to put an affiliate link in the description if you guys are interested in the downpipe or the turbo. In the next video, we're going to go take it for tuning and get it dyno to see how much power it's making on E50 and 91 octane. If this is the first video you're catching on mine, please consider subscribing. If you liked it, please give it a like so and rank higher. Thanks for watching.